If you happen to like working in the realm of graphic novels, especially something with a heavy metal look, you'll really like the new addition to Poser that is the new comic book styles. Before, with the little scene I have here, I've got just a, a creature, and we can go ahead, and it happens to be Creech, in fact. You were confined to some really basic types of presentations. You had to choose either the cartoon or cartoon with line, which is what I have selected right here. Or, if you were feeling adventuresome, you could come over to Texture Shaded, and what would happen then is that you would get these kind of hard shadows in here, and, well, that was pretty much it. It's okay, but the new options are available to you in two places. One is the display pull-down menu, down to cartoon tones, and this expands off the bottom of the page, so we can't really see what's going on. Or you can use a right-click. This gives us the same access to the controls, and this time you also enable comic book color. This gives you a super cool heavy metal look that when you scrub through it, you'll see some of the advancements that have been made. This high contrast area that goes ahead and has kind of a nice, I guess, stochastic type of termination to it, which gives a real stippled look, an ink stippled look, which is really pleasant to work with. As I scrub through this, we're going to notice a couple things. The demonstrations of this on the poser material, they usually deal with smooth skinned humans. And what we've got going on here is some geometry with a lot of deformation to it, which is really cool. So it's more than strictly rendering light onto a smooth object. We're trying to render some really kind of rough areas here. Eyebrows, that looks good. Teeth, check this out. The eyes are always illuminated, which is a perfect type of look for any type of comic book work. However, this problem, or I shouldn't say this opportunity is not without some issues. The issue being that when you have deformed geometry right here, the program tries to render it a little bit, and we're starting to see just a bit of polygon presentation as we move through that. There are no settings to go ahead and change that. It just happens to be one of those little pathologies that goes with the subject matter. Everything else is really cool, and you can render into this by choosing your render type instead of Firefly or Sketch to bring the preview mode. Let's look at some of the settings we can work with. And in this mode, they are very few. We have style options, and these work well for the other cartoon modes, but when it comes down to working with this new comic book mode, there's only one item here that really makes any difference, and it's the texture display mode. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean right here. By default, it comes in at 512, which is good for speed if you're wanting to go ahead and render this out to an animation, and the fact that motion kind of trumps quality of texture. However, if you're working with stills, you can go ahead and increase this to something like Let's go ahead and go to 2000, and I'll say Save Settings. It'll think about it for a second. We see our little poser man uh, giving us the time right there. And then it pops in, and we start seeing some of the really cool types of deformations that are part of the displacement maps that come with this character. So not only has it improved the tonal areas, but also the shadow areas have much more character now. Another option under the comic book item right here is to come down to Two Tones and change it to just Comic Book Without Color. This does the same thing, and if you work in a graphic novel environment and simply want to export out one frame after another and colorize it within the context of your novel, this is also a fantastic option. You can go ahead and scrub through it, and then you can post production, add the color type of things in there that you would want to do. So just a super cool way to go ahead and get this graphic heavy metal look to some of the animations or even stills that you might want to work with inside of Poser Pro.